a lot of people that are just casual fans of mixed martial arts and whatnot don't realize that when those shows first started, there was no time limit. It wasn't regulated the way that it, that it is today. And so you would have a show, you'd have some matches that would go 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour, however long it needed to go until there was a submission or an, or an ending. But now, and you've just made me aware of this, you pioneered something in 1985, boxing versus mixed martial arts, before mixed martial arts really even existed as a term. Take us, take us into this. Right. And this, and, and this is something that didn't happen, but we did everything to make it happen. It was probably 1985. We were doing, bo- it might be 86. We were doing boxing at the Irvine Marriott. So we were doing our shows. And a gentleman called me. Remember, we're going back a long ways. And said, Roy, I've got an idea. I've got a friend of mine who's from China who's at UCLA. And he's got an idea that let's see who's the best fighter. Uh, is the boxer or is a kung fu? Can we have them meet and see who's the best? Which is the age old I mean, yes, absolutely. Age-old question absolutely. until absolutely. recently. Right. We would always wonder that. Yes. Absolutely. I said, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm always looking for something. And my Chinese guy has got connections. He has a partner in Beijing who owns some nightclubs and they can put this all together. So I said, sure, if we're going to do that, we're going to, we have to have some, some sort of level playing field. So we need to create some rules. And I remember getting a couple of boxing trainers and Kung Fu or uh, at that time it was Jiu Jitsu because the, 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 Mixed martial arts wasn't even in, wasn't even known then, or the name wasn't there. And I remember we we took them to Vegas and we sat in a room all day, working on rules so that it'd be equal. Because the boxing guys wanted it this way, and the 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 the, the, the judo or the kung fu guys wanted it a certain way. And so we had to come to a middle ground on what'll work and so forth. Do Do you remember what was maybe one of the biggest? Because I know that if I'm a if I'm a boxer, my biggest sticking point is the kicks. It no, I, that was very good. That was one of the things. How do we How do we allow fighters to boxers to have shoes on and the kung fu people not have it? And where can the kicks be on that, or can there be no kicks at all on that? I don't remember what we've been too long on that. Anyway, we finally agreed on that. And, and I forget the, the Chinese partner, and we formed the partnership, my, myself, this other guy, and the Chinese guy from UCLA. And he says, Roy, I've got a meeting with the Chinese Sports Authority in Beijing. We're going to fly to Beijing and present this. They have an interest. You know what I'm saying to myself. I left a form. I was on my own. I was saying, great. And we're thinking, if we were going to do this, if we get it all together, we were going to do the first show in Vegas at the MGM Grand because the MGM Grand was interested because Chinese fans of great gamblers. And this was going to be China against the world on that. So there was some neat things. MGM, MGM Grand was very excited. We flew to Beijing. Never been to Beijing in my life. It was like going, you know, you're flying in. Um, it's very Spartanish airport, and there's soldiers there and so forth. We get in the hotel. We then meet the next day um, with the sports authorities and the interpreters and talking back and forth and so forth. Um, then they, and I think we met, we met for hours. Then they said, would you like to see the Chinese top elite fighters? Yes, sure. Well, this is, we don't let anybody that's, any Americans in to see this, but for this, we'll do this. Next morning, be outside the hotel at a certain time. And I remember being out there with, our, with, with my two other partners, and here are these military cars pull up. We get, this is, Be, this is Beijing in 1986, 87, when we're talking about, this is it's still communist, communist China. China yeah. We get in the car and we're driving and we're driving and we're driving and through the streets and back alleys and so forth. All of a sudden we come to this this street with a big wall. We're waiting out there and then the gates open. 
this is like a movie. We drive in, and here's like a compound, like from the Bridge on the River Kwai type thing. Mm-hmm. On it. We drive up, drive in, get out, and here military officers come out from on this porch to greet us. We go in there. We go into this building. We sit down. They serve tea. And it was really, as a young kid back then, I was 40, it was pretty intimidating. And they said that we talked and the interpreter was, how are you and what have you? Let's go see, would you like to see our boys train? So we go, get out and walk to this gymnasium, rickety old gymnasium. We go in and here's a lot of dirty mattresses and so forth. And they say something and hear these kids come out and they there's their coach there and then so this isn't state of the art this, this is, is not state of the art at all okay, on that. and this okay. is the elite in china right, there's okay. only six billion people in china right, right 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 and they start to warm up and they do flips and kicks then they start to spar and they were flipping each other on these mattresses this wasn't this wasn't a u.s olympic team people going there. and i'm looking at these guys and saying we don't want to do this because the American boxers not even going to get past the first round. We were looking at guys that were throwing jabs that were just tremendous athletes because that's all they did. Right, right, right. And was it also, were you seeing guys that were, I'm just trying to think of the best way to say this, were maybe hungrier in a different way than, I mean, because I know that American (laughs) fighters, I mean, were, they're, they're hungry. They're a different breed, but I'm just saying you're seeing guys that it sounds like were being trained and being brought up. In yes, it. this is when they were the, they, the cream de la cream were picked out and they lived there and they trained and that's all they did. It was right. like the Russians with the, the, that that's all they did. Um, and after about 15 minutes, they cut stop, and they took us out. That we've sought, we've seen too much. You're leaving right now on that. Um, so we went back, and then a funny story that night. My Chinese partner said, "Why we want you? To, we're going to go out to eat one of my my partner's nightclubs." So we get in the car, we meet that night, and we drive through Beijing, and here we come to this beautiful nightclub. Park there, people come out and greet us, open the doors. We go in, and it is a it was a nightclub and a discotheque. That's when discotheques were big back then. We walk in. We're greeted and we're, we're, we're taken through the restaurant and the discotheque, the dance floor, down this hallway. We open this door and here's a massive kind of room with seats around it, pillows on that, and a big round table. And we go in for, for dinner. And pe- Chinese people come in, they say, this is the mayor of Beijing, here's the police chief of Beijing, and we're, we're gonna have dinner. Now, I'm a meat and potatoes guy, but we're in Beijing. And the first course they bring out, the first course they bring out, I'm looking at it, and it's it's chicken legs, legs that have been cut off a chicken and cooked there. And, you know, not wanting to... Not wanting to embarrass ourselves, be the dirty Americans on that. I'm going, I'm going to have to eat this on that. Then we get through that. They bring another course, and this is shark lips, lips of sharks. Wait, wait, what had you been eating up until then? Like, had, uh, I think they'd be, we at the, at, at the hotel, there oh, were some okay. uh, hamburgers and so forth. You can that. get, okay, right. okay, okay, okay. But this no, is please. the elite of the elite eating this. Take me back to the shark lips. And the shark, and I said, I'm, I'm going to have a tough time. And I remember having a napkin and putting it in my mouth, and then <clears throat> there's a Seinfeld <laughs> episode where he's eating mutton, and he can't do it, and he goes up and spits it into his napkin and puts it right, back in right. it. That's what I did, and it was. Then they bring another course on this plate, and they were kind of, they were shells, and they had like uh, garlic and green stuff. And I rem- I can't remember the guy, what was that? He said, that's snails, escargot. Now, I never had that, but there were 10 of them. I said, ay, 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 and I took one. I said, I, I hope I don't get sick. And I remember putting it in my mouth, and it was like, hmm, <laughs> that's pretty good. So we ate that. We're finished with dinner. He says, okay, everybody up. We go down the hall again. We go into this other door open. And this is a room that has, it's a big room and has 
seats and pillows around, kind of couches all around, and there's a karaoke machine in the middle. Good. We go in there and karaoke. Maybe 15 minutes into that. Wait, it was just you guys karaokeing with each other? Well, they, we hadn't started yet. We were just oh, visiting okay, and okay, so okay. forth. About 10, 15 minutes, the door opens, and here's this Chinese official bringing in three beautiful Chinese girls, dressed kind of provocatively. And uh, they bring them to my partner and I there. I'm going, you know, what are we supposed to do? And the guy says, well, these girls are, do you, there can be your partners tonight. I'm going to myself, wait a minute, a partner with a girl for that, to sit with you and so for the dance? And because I hesitated for about three minutes, we were talking, they thought these girls weren't big enough, good enough, they left with the girls. Three minutes later, they come back with three more girls on that. I remember one was wearing that a sh- T-shirt with the Rolling Stones with the big lips. Oh, with the lips and the tongue. Not. And I said, well, I'm, I don't want to get the man. I said, she's a very nice looking girl. She's got the, She came and sat with me the whole evening on that. And uh, what happened, we get back to the States. We meet with the MGM Grand. We're saying, guys, we're on our track. This could happen in four or five months on that. Even though you'd seen those guys already and you knew. Right. The after, after, and because it was going to be a big piece yeah, of business exactly. on that. Um. The, my Chinese UCLA guy partner in Beijing got arrested for payola or okay. some other stuff, and the whole deal blew up because he was our contact in Russia, and it didn't happen. But the great story about eating shark lips and and chicken feet, uh, chicken's feet, and. Uh, Never having a girl brought to me and said, who would you like there? And I said to one. Well, but even even more than that, I think it's also a great story of seeing an opportunity. Absolutely. And taking it to something that's an idea and seeing and actually seeing way that like, I mean, that idea, something you thought about for a few seconds initially. Right. Took you to China. Absolutely. Took me to China. All expense paid trip to China and so forth. And I've always felt that that would have, that really would have got some TV coverage. Well, on look that. at now because look now at, it is. It was at, it was fast fast forward now. Um, look at the shows that you're putting on. I mean, you've done movie tie shows. You've done I mean, all, all all these like like it's it's it is second nature almost. What that what what that that crazy idea in the '80s is now entertainment now. Now it is normal. Right. Yeah. It's normal. Uh, because there was a, who, who's the toughest fighter? Is it a boxer or is it a Muay Thai Kung Fu fighter? And so let's get the best boxers against the best Chinese fighters. And there was going to be some money involved, purses and so forth. Um, but we, I got my trip to China and that's where it ended there. And I, have, I don't know whatever happened to those guys and so forth. So that's my... Uh, that's my Chinese boxer uh, Muay Thai story. Another podcast. <laughs> Another podcast. Under the belt. Under our belts.